The next story I wanted to talk about is titled, You Should Feel Bad for the Priest Who Quit After Getting Caught Using Grinder." This is written by Hemant Mehta on the Friendly Atheist website, so let's give it a read and see what it says. On Tuesday, Monsignor Jeffrey Burrow, the General Secretary of the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops, USCCB, God, that's a long acronym, resigned from the position he's been holding since last November. The USCCB is a conservative wing of the church that recently made headlines for suggesting pro-choice Catholic politicians like Joe Biden should be denied communion, though they backed off from that position after public outcry. I actually remember this. I thought about talking about this when it all kind of went down. Um, the USCCB, a subset of the Catholic Church, I guess said that that joe biden should not receive communion how bad shit crazy is this seriously let's keep reading burrow below wasn't accused of any crimes there were no allegations of child sex abuse or anything like that he wasn't involved in any financial improprieties so why did he resign because an outside group tracking his phone found that he was frequenting gay bars and using the hookup app grinder to presumably meet other men that is fucking sad that is so incredibly depressing for this guy. He is obviously hiding who he is, hiding his sexuality, and has been for who knows how long. And not only that, but he's a member of the, the conservative wing of the church. So not only is he in a position that he can't really get out of, but it seems to me that he also hates himself for who he is. Or he wouldn't be a member of the right side of this, like the right wing side. It's so depressing. Earlier, I released a video about this guy, David Letting, I believe, on TikTok. I didn't mock the guy. I felt bad for him that he's so completely brainwashed and pulled into this shit. How sad is this? Like, he can't escape this. Not that he wants to right now, but he only arrived at these conclusions and these positions, David Letting and this guy, through brainwashing. Through indoctrination. That's it. That's why he's there. That's why he believes this shit. And it's sad to watch people buckle down and essentially hurt themselves for no fucking reason. It's heartbreaking. I'm not making fun of this guy. I feel bad for him, really. Let's keep reading. This is Hemant Mehta. Let's back up for a second. The Catholic News Agency says that in 2018, they were approached by an individual with a proposal. Quote, this party claimed to have access to technology capable of identifying clergy and others who download popular hookup apps, such as Grindr and Tinder, and to pinpoint their locations using the internet addresses of their computers or mobile devices. That's kind of creepy. This is Hemant Mehta again. The person's hope was that the church would use the technology to root out priests who were violating their vows by having sex or inviting scandal into the church. The CNA refused the offer. Yeah, FYI... Priests in the Catholic Church are not allowed to sleep with anybody ever. It's a vow of celibacy. As far as I know, they are sworn to be celibate. Never touch themselves, never think about dirty things, never sleep with anybody ever, no matter what. In fact, when Protestantism and the Catholic Church split, that was a really big difference between the two. Um, Protestant... Priests were allowed to marry and have children. Catholic priests were not. Let's continue. It's not clear how the individual was tapping the phones, but it was undoubtedly plausible, if highly unethical. Of all the ways to police priests, catching them in the act of a consensual hookup seems fairly low on the list of problems I have with the Catholic Church leaders. Yes, they would be violating their vows, but the priests aren't the problem. The anti-gay, anti-sex vows are the problem. Absolutely agree with Hemet Mehta on this one. This is a serious issue. Anyway, while the CNA said no to the offer, the Catholic website called The Pillar appears to have accepted it, and the outlet broke the news about Burrow. This is a quote from the Pillar outlet. According to commercially available records of app signal data obtained by the Pillar, a mobile device correlated to Burl emitted app data signals from the location-based hookup app Grinder on a near-daily basis during parts of 2018, 2019, and 2020 at both the USCCB office and his USCCB-owned residence, as well as during USCCB meetings and events in other cities. I've got to say, if you're doing things like that, you should probably have a burner phone rather than using the 
church phone. You don't have to be a security expert to realize you should be using a burner and that the Catholic Church, in all their gross amount of wealth, would invest some of it in something like this. Let's keep reading. This is back to a quote from The Pillar. Data app signals suggest he was at the same time engaged in serial and illicit sexual activity. On June 22nd, the mobile device correlated to Burl emitted signals from Entourage, which bills itself as Las Vegas gay bathhouse. Interesting. The data was obtained from a data vendor and authenticated by an independent data consulting firm contracted by the pillar. This is so fucking sad, man. I feel so bad for this guy. Though he is a moral monster, or seems to be, though he is self-hating, can't stand homosexuals, quote-unquote, I wish that he wasn't so completely trapped in his own head with all this propaganda swirling around. I wish we could find a way to break this guy out of it, you know? Break him out of this destructive fucking mindset and belief system. Let's keep reading. This is Hemant Mehta. The Pillar contacted the U.S. CCB about the data last week, giving them time to respond. Before the website received any answers, though, the U.S. CCB announced Burrell's resignation. Damn. Everything about this scandal just rubs me the wrong way. It should bother you too. Whatever you think about the USCCB, the Catholic Church, or priestly vows, what did Burl do that was so problematic? Well, he's gay, and he wanted to act on that. But because he's a Catholic priest, he was forced to do it in secret. And that's it. That's all. That's the whole story. The pillar went out of its way to say there's no evidence Burl met up with minors, suggesting falsely that there's a strong link between people on Grindr and child sex trafficking. I get fucking sick of this. This isn't just about the link between child sex and Grindr. More broadly, it's about the link between homosexuality and... People in this world that absolutely hate homosexuality obsess over some way to link the two so that... Everybody can hate it, and not just them. It's fucking sad and disgusting. Let's keep reading. The site unfairly suggested that Burl, whose job involved coordinating the U.S. Church's response to child cases, was incapable of doing it because of his actions. In fact, a large portion of the article is spent talking about child priests who have children and the role of hookup apps to facilitate all that, and none of it is relevant to the case of Burl. It's all a red herring. For all we know, Burl just wanted to have sex with other consenting adult men. Who cares? It's a violation of a rule that shouldn't exist. But the pillar even quotes someone who says that a priest failing to live up to the church's sexual rules is only a step away from sexual predation. What? No, not even close. Sure, the hypocrisy is worth pointing out. Burl has probably spent years struggling with church-enforced sexual repression. Absolutely! This data came from 2018, 19, and 20. So at least three years he's been doing this. He really should have just had a fucking burner phone, honestly. The Catholic Church is also within its right to push him out of his position. I don't have a ton of sympathy for gay priests who choose to join a corrupt, bigoted institution, then whine about being unable to have get married or have children. But I also refuse to treat a gay priest as some kind of heretic because he broke his vows in order to act on his perfectly natural and legal and consensual desires. You know, the clergy project was started by Richard Dawkins, I think, and it was the solution to similar problems to this. I, I, don't, I have no reason to believe that this guy doesn't believe what he's saying. In fact, he was a member of the right-wing faction of the Catholic Church. So this guy probably does believe the things he says. He probably does hate gay people. He probably does still buy into all this extreme right-wing nutbaggery. So this guy specifically, I may not have too much sympathy for, as far as, you know, being in the Catholic Church goes and everything. But the clergy project exists for priests who learned that as their only skill, being a priest, and no other skills in life. And they grow up and they become an adult and in their older age now don't believe it anymore. And they have no option but to keep lying and propagandizing to people. Because what the fuck else are they going to do? All of their money, their housing, their fucking cell phones, everything. 
is tied up in the church. And if they come out and say, I don't believe this anymore, or I disagree with this doctrine or that thing or whatever, they're fucked. That's it. They have no other option in life but to continue to pretend and lie and propagandize. What are they going to do? I have sympathy for those types of people. As I said, I don't think this guy is one of them. I think he's a true believer. Um, That's speculation. I don't know what's in his head. But the reason I say that is because he was part of the right-wing subset of the Catholic Church. It wasn't just a normal member of the Catholic Church. Uh, it was it was beyond that. But as Hemant Mehta said, I do feel bad for him that he got caught up in something that he you know he shouldn't have been getting tr- in trouble for in the first place. This is Hemant Mehta again. There's no reason to think he was putting anyone in danger or mishandling his job or committing financial crimes like the colleagues of Pope Francis. The whistleblower just wanted this guy out because he dared to act on his homosexuality. The pillar was happy to play along. Their ethical lapses are far more concerning than anything Burl did. Stephen P. Millies, a theology professor at Catholic Theological Union, wrote a piece for Religion News Service that fairly condemns the tactics used to derail Burl's career. Quote, I am a sinner. So are you. So is Monsignor Jeffrey Burrow. None of us has a personal life that would withstand the sort of scrutiny the pillar has applied to Burrow. Every single one of us has had a shameful moment we regret, and I suspect most of us must be caught up in cycles of sinfulness that we repeat less because we want to than because we are sinners and cannot help being sinners. Unless there's some reason to think he's harmed someone else, I feel sure his sins are none of my business as much as my sins are none of yours. As a Catholic, I'm bound to believe all of that. Wow, actually, that's really interesting that he would say something like that as a Catholic. Um, The vow of celibacy is pretty fucking serious. You can't really move up in the the church hierarchy for example, becoming a cardinal or a pope or whatever, unless you held that celibacy vow. You know what that means? That means the pope is the world's oldest virgin. How fucking sad is that, dude? Really, how sad is that shit? This is back to Hemant Mehta. He's right on the principles. If strangers could have access to everything you were doing on your phone or in your private life, would you feel comfortable having those details exposed to the world? Priests deserve privacy too even if that involves hypocrisy concerning the church's rule book, and especially when no one is hurt in the process. Millies also notes that buried in the pillar story is another ethical lapse on their part. They outed Burl without his consent. That aspect of the story is getting very little coverage. That is pretty fucking sad. The USCCB's response to all this has been a textbook example of what not to say. Quote, this is from the USCCB. What was shared with us did not include allegations of misconduct with minors. However, in order to avoid becoming a distraction to the operations and ongoing work of the conference, Monsignor Burrell has resigned effective immediately. The conference takes all allegations of misconduct seriously and will pursue all appropriate steps to address them. I feel so bad for this guy. And you know the worst part of this? You remembered the Catholic Church's response to the CSA, Child you remember what they did? Did those priests resign? Of course not. The Catholic Church paid to have them moved from parish to parish to protect them from prosecution. So what does the Catholic Church do when children are victims of their priests? They protect them. What do they do when a priest is living his life in consensual relationships, they force him to resign. That's fucking sad. Let's keep reading. This is Hemant Mehta again. So he didn't kids, but he still did something really, really bad. So we're not going to defend him. Such cowardice and homophobia. Misconduct? Are you kidding me? I freely admit he broke his own vows. I also think it's fair to criticize a gay priest for promoting a Catholic church that's done so much harm to LGBTQ people worldwide, just as it's fair to call out Republican officials who claim to support LGBTQ rights while propping up a party that works to undermine those rights. But on the spectrum of bad behavior by priests, this is a nothing burger. The people using private, if legal, data to out a priest for hooking up with other adult men and the people agreeing that this resignation is warranted 
all to defend outdated and bigoted Catholic rules that shouldn't exist in the first place are the real problems here. It's a shame that the Catholic Church hasn't progressed further than it has. I guess we aren't at the point anymore where the Catholic Church was running towns and excommunication meant you have to wander out into the woods and fucking die. So we've made some progress on that front. But the Catholic Church has a lot of fucking progress to make still. Really. I get so sick of hearing about this kind of thing. 